All right, next question. What are your thoughts on Dorian Yates high intensity training or the idea of doing one working set to failure per exercise as per Mike Menser and Arthur Jones? Um, so this is interesting because I think it was like two or three days ago, I was listening to Dorian Yates on Joe Rogan's podcast because I've been listening to Joe Rogan's podcast lately for some reason. Um, and it was really interesting. He actually said that he attributes his look to that high intensity, low volume training style. And he thinks that that approach is what gives the bodybuilders of the 90s era that really grainy, dense look. Um, I'm not convinced if there's really anything to that. I feel like there's just so many other variables. Like I know that their drug protocols have changed a lot. The guys are look tend to look more bloated nowadays. And you do have really grainy guys like uh, Branch Warren and, and some others who, who resemble that look of uh, Dorian. And I don't think that they necessarily have the same training style, but there, there could, very well could be something to it. With that said, um, even though I tend to advocate for higher volume training in the sense that higher volume training is in a direct correlation with increased muscle mass. And I tend to interview guys who've published this research on training volume. Um, I'm also very open to research on lower volume training and higher intensity training. Um, so two people who have really kind of driven this area forward are, I actually don't know their first names, but Fisher and Steele. Um, uh, maybe I'll link a few of their papers down below if you guys would like to read it. Um, but they basically come at this from a different angle than a lot of the other experts that you've probably heard a lot from, like uh, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and James Krieger and, and those guys who tend to advocate for more of a higher volume approach. These guys tend to argue that, well, you can actually get most of the hypertrophic bang for your buck just by doing one all-out set to failure, which is much closer to what guys like Dorian Yates used to recommend. Um, so when I look at all this literature and all these studies with like these kind of conflicting results, what I think is if you're going to go the high intensity approach, then you almost have to by default go lower volume. And if you are going lower volume, then I think it is important that you take sets to failure because it's when you start combining a very high intensity all out every set to failure approach with also a high volume approach that you start to, to run into potential injury and overtraining issues. So the way I see it is if you're going to be training higher volume, then you need to be training less frequently to failure and with relatively lower RPEs. If you're going to be training very intensely with many sets taken to failure, then you don't want to train also at a high volume. And I think that you can have success taking both of these approaches. And what I would do is periodize it. So you'll have some blocks of training where you're training at a higher volume with a lower intensity and then other blocks of training where you're doing more of like a Dorian Yates style high intensity program at a lower volume. If you cycle through that and design it in what I, I would think to be a, a smart way over say a calendar year, you can come up with a really intelligent macro cycle there. So um, I, I'm totally open to all that, but I think that just sticking to one kind of like pigeonholing yourself into one approach, like, oh, I only do the Yates style HIIT or I only do high volume training uh, is probably not the best way to really maximize on your potential.